special architect guest today is Carl Fender, founding partner of Fender Katsalidis, the internationally renowned Australian firm, admired for their unique design of high-rise buildings, among them several of the tallest towers in the Southern Hemisphere. Currently in construction, they designed Merdeka 118 in Kuala Lumpur, the second tallest building once finished in 2021. Mr. Fender will talk about Merdeka 118, lessons learned along the way, and more. Please enjoy. My name's Carl Fender. I'm a director of Fender Katsalidis Architects. We're a firm that is based in Melbourne, Sydney and Brisbane. We started about 25 years ago in practice. The first projects were actually residential projects that were initiated in a development sense by um, our partner Nanda Katsalidis. Our next really large project was Medeka 118. Now this is a building that will be the second tallest building when it's finished. Um, early next year. Medeka Tower is probably a once-in-a-lifetime project. It happens to be on one of the most important sites in Malaysia, in Kuala Lumpur, the place where independence was proclaimed by the then Prime Minister in 1957. And it is marked by a heritage stadium, which is an open stadium, and it was on that field that the Prime Minister raised his finger and said, uh, we will be independent. It's a, an amazing, amazing sight. And to be tasked with the challenge of putting a major, major building on that site, it was quite a challenge and quite a responsibility and also a huge honour. So here we have this beautiful stadium it's been remodelled just like it was in 1957. It's low scale. And we're asked to put this huge tower there. And I suppose anybody involved with the project could be accused of overriding the importance of that stadium and that place. But in fact, the Medeka Tower is quite the contrary to that. It is a marker. It's a marker of a special place, and it's a marker that can be seen from anywhere in Kuala Lumpur. And so the design of that building was very, very important indeed. On the one hand, it had to talk about the future. I mean, future technology, future construction technology, future workplace, future everything. But on the other hand, it was invested in a really important historical site in KL. And it didn't, it didn't want to say, we are more important than this site. It needed to say, this is the marker for this incredibly important site, and this marker is a natural occurrence on this site. Our building is formed by a lot of triangular pieces that go together to make the crystalline form, and those triangular pieces are a subtle reference to the many different cultures, religions, and types of society that make up Malaysia. It's a way of reconciling the modern issues with the traditional issues and the history and the makeup of a city like Kuala Lumpur. With the tower came retail, residential, and they are very appropriate additional uses to the tower itself, which is basically a commercial tower with a hotel, a restaurant, and an incredible sky lobby. So blend it all together, you've got a really rich mixed-use development. But it also gave something to Stadium Merdeka. Prior to this development, Stadium Merdeka had a gravel bike car park as its front entry. We have got the most beautiful park underway, which cascades from the tower right down in front of the Medeka Stadium. The gardens were designed by Sasaki out of Boston, a very, very wonderful landscape architecture firm. And they treated that as a series of cascading water, which by the time they get to the front of Medeka become like a 
a vapour so that on a normal day the kids can come and play in a mist, which is beautiful in that climate. On a day where there is a performance in the stadium, the mist can turn off and we have a plaza. So there's a place of assembly in front of the Medeka Stadium. So this garden, apart from having luxuriant, shady gardens, has also got this body of water that cascades and does various beautiful transformations and gives back to Stadium Medeka.